So the Nokia 3.4 is quite an interesting device for me specifically, because I wanted to find out how much, let's say a minimum budget has to be in order for you to enjoy a good smartphone experience and have a device that you can carry around with and use as your daily driver. So in this review, I wanna talk about the good things about this phone, the things that impressed me for its price, the bad things about this phone, as well as the things that were just meh. So let me start with the good things, the things that I really liked about this phone for the money that you pay for it. So I really like the hardware and build quality of this phone. It feels more expensive than it actually is. It has this plastic rail on the edges that feels a lot like metal because it's very solid. The phone feels quite dense. It doesn't feel like you can bend it at all. And I really like the textured plastic back as well, which feels nice. It doesn't feel very cheap. It feels very suitable for this price range. And I think the hardware generally makes this phone stand out amongst most of its competitors. The other really good aspect about this hardware is the display. So even compared to the more expensive Nokia 5.3, or at least more expensive at launch, this display has more saturated colors and slightly more contrast. And I really like that because it feels a bit more immersive. Do keep in mind though that this does have an HD plus display, so it doesn't have the highest possible resolution for its class. But for daily usage, I had absolutely no problems with it. The third aspect that I liked is the speed. So when you're using this phone, you know, despite having the Snapdragon 460, which isn't exactly high end or even a mid range processor, the phone feels quite snappy most of the time. An important note here is that I'm using the four gigabytes of RAM version. And from my colleagues at Nokia Mob, you know, they were complaining about their three gigabyte RAM version being a bit sluggish, but from my experience on this particular unit, it's been quite good. The other aspect I really like about it is how it handles heat. So, you know, no matter what task I'm doing on it, whether I'm gaming or I'm using the hotspot, the phone doesn't get hot at all, almost unnoticeable. And that's very impressive for this device and for this class. I also like the pictures that this phone can capture in daylight. So the camera experience isn't exactly great and I really don't like using the camera app on this phone as it feels a bit slow in taking pictures and takes ages to open the pictures. But the end result most of the time was satisfactory, specifically when there is a lot of light around. As for the favorite aspect about this phone, it definitely has to be the battery life. So this phone easily lasts you through a day of usage. And even with my usage, with having two SIM cards in and I'm running 4G most of the time and I'm even running hotspot for about three to four hours a day, it still manages to last me until the end of the day with about 40% battery life left. Based on my usage, this puts it ahead of the Nokia 5.3 and even much better than the Nokia 8.3. And finally, there's obviously the clean Android experience. For this sort of device and you know what you require when you spend this much money on a device like this, the experience is quite good. You get the stock Android One experience with updates and that's something that definitely differentiates this over a lot of its competitors. Now let's talk about the things that didn't really excite me, the meh things. The first one was the speaker performance. So it's okay for this class, but it's definitely not something that impresses me in any sort of way. It's just about loud enough, but the clarity isn't exactly there, especially when you tune it up all the way to maximum volume. The other thing that didn't really impress me was the vibration motor on this phone, especially compared to the 5.3. The vibration motor really gives it away that this is a budget friendly device and nothing more. Now let's talk about the bad aspects of this phone. The first thing definitely has to be the amount of bugs that I faced. So even though the performance is quite snappy most of the time, sometimes you'll face these software bugs where the phone just stops responding all of a sudden or takes one second or two to respond to your touch. This can get really annoying, especially when you want to do something very quickly. And I'm really hoping that they fix it with an update. The camera situation also isn't great when it comes to any situation outside of perfect lighting. And this also applies to the other main camera here, which is a five megapixel ultra wide camera, which generally speaking, almost never impressed me. The images that it captures is just 
too soft most of the time and the edges lose so much detail compared to the center. Then there is the video recording aspect of this phone. So it maxes out at 1080p at 30 frames per second, which isn't a huge issue, but there is no stabilization whatsoever on the video. So you end up with super shaky video footage. The other thing that I don't think is great about this phone is that it comes with Android 10 out of the box, even though Android 11 has been out for a few months now, and this is an Android one device. So ideally it should have come out with Android 11. Sadly, it doesn't. And generally speaking, I would avoid going with the three gigabyte RAM version of this device, even if it's compellingly cheap, especially if you want to use it as your daily driver. I think Android is terribly optimized for anything below four gigs of RAM. So let's sum it up quickly. You should buy this phone if you value hardware and design almost above anything else. If Android One is something that sounds appealing to you, this device will also fit your needs. If updates are something that's quite important to you and you want to use a device for two years while getting all the latest updates, then this phone will probably also satisfy your needs. And finally, if battery life is very important to you, you'll also be very happy with the Nokia 304. You shouldn't buy this phone if imaging is one of the most important pillars for you in a smartphone, unless you're a very patient person and you know exactly what you're doing and you don't mind going through the hassle that is the camera experience. You also should avoid this phone if shooting video is quite important to you because of the lack of stabilization. And finally, if you're not a fan of Android One and you want more customization, then this phone is definitely not for you. So to answer the question I asked at the beginning of the video, yes, you can use this phone as a daily driver and you will be absolutely fine, but with the limitations that I mentioned. So I wanna know what you guys think about the Nokia 3.4. Let me know in the comments down below. If you own this phone, what are your comments and what's your feedback? I would definitely love to hear what you think. That's it from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.